This is Marie. She's about to log into her favorite social media platform, Photogram, to check what her friends have been up to. Like many people, she keeps all her passwords neatly stored in a little text file on her computer. Convenient? Absolutely. Safe? Not so much. Marie's password looks pretty strong at first glance. Marie 2000, a mix of letters, numbers, and even a special character. She created it because, well, she was born in 2000. Easy to remember, right? So, Marie types her email, enters Marie 2000, presses enter, and voila, she's in. Everything works perfectly. Now, let's switch perspectives for a moment. Time to put on our black hat and see what a hacker could do to break this kind of password. We'll start with a simple assumption. Let's pretend Photogram doesn't have any form of protection against brute force attacks. That means no lockout after several wrong tries, no delays, no capture walls. In reality, most websites do have these protections, and we'll talk about them later. But for now, let's keep things simple to understand the process. Before we can attack anything, we need to understand where to attack. Here's what happens under the hood when Marie logs in. She types her password into the login form on her computer. Her computer sends that information securely to the website through HTTPS. From this point on, everything is encrypted, meaning that intercepting the data mid-transit, what's called a man-in-the-middle attack, won't help us. The website server then receives the encrypted data, decrypts it on its side, and checks whether the credentials are correct. As a hacker, that gives us two possible attack points, either Marie's computer, the client side, or the website server, the server side, where the data gets decrypted. Attacking the server is much harder, often impossible without a serious vulnerability. But attacking from Marie's side, that's something we can simulate right now. So let's start the brute force. Before we even start cracking anything, we need one essential ingredient, a dictionary, a massive list of possible passwords. In a brute force attack, this dictionary is our weapon. The more passwords it contains, the stronger our chances become. We're talking millions, sometimes billions, of possible combinations. And we can do even better. We can make a targeted dictionary specifically for Marie, using all the personal information we know about her. Even if Marie's password seems fairly strong, if our dictionary is long enough, there's a pretty good chance her password is hiding somewhere in there. The first tool we'll start with is a general password dictionary. You can find the link to this repository in the video description. Seeklists is full of useful lists for penetration testing, usernames, URLs, buzzing words, and more. But what we're interested in today are the password lists. There are plenty of them, usually built from leaked password databases. The most famous one is the RockU list. It comes from an old social media platform whose database was leaked years ago millions of passwords, all stored in plain text, with no encryption at all. For our demo, we'll use the RockU list, and who knows, maybe Marie's password is already in there. But what if her password doesn't appear in the RockU list? Maybe she got creative. That's where our custom dictionary comes in, a list of potential passwords based on details about her life. This is the social engineering part of the attack. We gather everything we can find about Marie, her name, surname, birth year, favorite pet, hobbies, and we mix all that into one big word list. Then we simply combine this custom list with the RockU list. To generate that custom list, we'll use a Python tool called CUPP, the Common User Passwords Profiler. The link is also in the description. CUPP can automatically generate personalized dictionaries based on a person's details. Check out the documentation if you want to explore all its options, but today, we'll use the simplest mode. It will ask a few questions about Marie and automatically create a tailored list of passwords based on those answers. Here, you can see that I've already downloaded the RockU list. Now let's add CUPP into the mix. Make sure you have Python installed. Then clone the CUPP repo and run the script. We type in all the info we know about Marie.
and just like that, it's done. Let's open the file and see the result. A quick pro tip. If you want to gather more info automatically from someone's email address, there's a Python library called Holhe. You'll find the link below as well. Let's run Holhe and input Marie's email. Don't worry, I'll blur the real email to keep things private. The tool will show which online services are linked to that address. Super useful for building a more realistic dictionary. Now that we have both lists, let's merge them together into one giant word list. And done. I used Flask to code a simple server endpoint. It checks if the password you send matches Marie's credentials. Let's update the server to use Marie's actual login and password for the test. Perfect. If it's correct, it returns OK. If not, it returns not OK. We now have a working simulation of a simple login server. All right, let's fire up the Flask server. Now, let's open a browser and visit the server's URL. In my case, it's running locally on my own machine. You can see that when the page loads, the web server logs the request in the terminal. That means everything is working perfectly. Now let's try again, but this time with Marie's real email and password. And we're in. It works. Okay, so we've successfully logged in manually. But remember, the whole point of a brute force attack is to automate the process. We can't sit here and type millions of passwords by hand. We need a script to do the heavy lifting for us. To make that happen, we need to understand exactly what the browser is sending to the server in the background. And for that, we'll use a tool called curl. This is the command to send a login request directly from the terminal. Let's test it first with some random credentials. The URL I'm using is the one shown by the Flask server. In my case, that's localhost on port 5000. I'll save the command, run it. And there's the response from the server. Not okay. The login failed, as expected. Now, same command. But this time, we'll use Marie's actual login and password. Run it again. And the server responds. Okay, success, perfect. Now that we know how to communicate with the server manually, it's time to automate the whole thing and unleash our password dictionary on it. Let's write a brute force script. To really kick things off, I wrote a very simple Python script that goes through every password in a text file, checking them one by one against the server. Here's how it works. The first function, called ITER passwords, goes through our giant password list line by line, picking out each password one at a time. Then, in the main part of the script, we set Marie's email as the username and we point the program to the password list we built earlier, combining the CUPP generated file and the classic ROCKU list. Let's stop editing and actually try it out. Once we hit run, the script springs to life, firing off hundreds of login attempts every second. If we wanted to go even faster, we could use multi-threading to send multiple requests in parallel. But this setup is already impressively quick. And look at that, we've got a hit. The script managed to find Marie's password from the word list and log in automatically. That's how simple and scary brute force attacks can be. Let's add a dose of reality. In actual scenarios, servers aren't just going to sit there and let you hammer them with unlimited login attempts. They use rate limiting, a simple technique that deliberately slows you down or outright blocks you after too many attempts. This makes direct brute force attacks almost impossible. Let me show you how that works. I'm going to tweak our Flask server to introduce a one second delay before each response. Now, let's run our brute force script again. As you can see, everything grinds to a halt. Instead of firing off hundreds of requests every second, we're limited to just one per second, at best. 
Brute forcing this way would take months or even years. So, is brute force finished? Not quite. There's still one trick up our sleeve. Here's the thing. Websites don't store your passwords in plain text. Instead, they use hashing. That means when you create a password, the site runs it through a mathematical function, a hash algorithm, that transforms it into a long string of characters. A hash always looks the same for the same input, but you can't turn it back into the original password. At least, that's the theory. But here's the catch. Sometimes, databases leak. And because so many people reuse passwords across multiple websites, these leaks are pure gold for attackers. When a database leaks, you might get a giant list of usernames and password hashes. Now, all you have to do is hash all the passwords in your dictionary and compare them to the leaked hashes. If there's a match, boom, you've recovered the original password. This technique is called using a rainbow table. It's basically an enormous pre-computed list for unhashing passwords by searching for collisions. So, with a leaked hash database and a well-prepared word list, it's still possible to recover passwords, just in a different way. Before we dive into brute forcing hashed passwords, let's make our web server a bit more realistic. First, we'll import Python's built-in hashlib library. We'll start by hashing the password stored on the server, so it's no longer saved as plain text. Then, when a user tries to log in, we hash the password they enter and compare the hashes instead of the plain passwords. Okay, now our server handles hashed passwords securely. Time to crack it. I have a file containing possible password hashes linked to Marie's password. For this demo, there's only one hash in the file, but in the real world, you could have thousands. All those leaked hashes connected to Marie's email or username. Alongside, we have the word list we generated earlier, full of probable passwords Marie might have used. Now, to actually crack the hash, we'll use an extremely popular tool called Hashcat. Hashcat is powerful password cracking software that uses your computer's hardware. And if you have a GPU, graphics card, it can run much faster. It works on all major platforms, and you'll find the download link in the description below. Here's the command we'll use. It tells Hashcat to test the hashes in our file against every password in our dictionary. The M parameter specifies the hash type. For MD5, which we use in this demo, M is set to zero. Let's start cracking. It might take some time depending on your hardware, the size of your dictionary, and the hash type. On my machine, Hashcat is testing millions of passwords every second. And just like that, success. Hashcat found Marie's password by matching the hash. Let's take the password it found and try logging in on our server. And there it is. Marie's password gains us access. So, as you've seen, Marie's password really didn't stand a chance. Why? Two big reasons. First, her password isn't complex enough. It's easily guessed, generated, or found on a common word list. Second, Marie reused her password across multiple sites. That means, if even a single database leaks, and, let's face it, they do all the time, her password hash is almost guaranteed to be floating around the internet. So, what should Marie do next? She actually has two solid options. The safest is to never reuse the same password on different sites, and to choose only truly complex passwords. Realistically, that means using a password manager it keeps track of all those complicated passwords for you. Or, Marie can enable two-factor authentication. That way, even if her password leaks, it's not enough to break into her account. A hacker would need that second factor too. Now, what about the website owners out there? If you want to keep your users safer, there's a simple but powerful technique. Add a salt to every password before hashing it. A hash is a lot tastier with salt. That's it for today's demo. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and see you next time for another exploration in hacking.